Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Over the years, I have managed to successfully replicate and make improvements upon many of the recipes of my Italian mother and her mother. One of the recipes I've never wanted to learn how to make was my mother's Italian Christmas cookies because every year she made them, and they were a lot of fun. We would help her make them, but within a few days, they would turn into rocks. We weren't allowed to throw them in the house. I could never figure out why, and then it occurred to me decades later, both of them came through the Depression. My grandmother arrived here from Naples before the, de the Great Depression. My mother was a child during the Great Depression, and my grandmother was notorious for cutting corners when baking that is expensive. Water is cheap. Substitute. And that's probably where they went wrong. So I decided what I was going to do is I was going to learn how to make these Italian Christmas cookies the proper way and using proper ingredients and then see how they came out. And they came out actually very well. So let me get into the ingredients I use for making my Italian Christmas cookies. For the cookies themselves, I'm using four and a half cups of weighed flour. I always weigh my flour when baking because when baking it's important that your ingredients be accurately measured. So these actually come out to my flour comes out to 22 and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. Then I have three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, three, three quarters of a cup of butter at room temperature, I have one half a teaspoon of salt and then two teaspoons of baking powder. And then for the wet ingredients, I have four large eggs, three quarters of a cup of heavy cream, and then I'm using one tablespoon of extract. In this case, I'm using anise extract. I actually prefer almond extract, but anise is more traditional, so I'm gonna go with that today, but you can feel free to substitute whatever extract you like. When I get into the, the making of the icing, I'll get into those ingredients. You'll notice there is no water. So those are the ingredients for my cookies. Conventional wisdom tells me that if I want a soft, crumbly cookie, I want to combine my butter and my flour first as much as possible to get the flour to absorb the, the butter fat. I don't want to build up chains, gluten chains. I don't want an elastic dough like you would when you're making bread. I want this to be crumbly, so I'm going to combine these two ingredients, the butter and my flour, first. Again, my butter is at room temperature, so it'll be easier to combine in there. And then I'm going to use a pastry cutter, and this always makes a mess. But in the end, I'll be able to bring it all back together again anyways. And you've got to get your hands into the food as it is. I think it's important to get your hands in the food when cooking. I'm working on a rubber mat here so I don't make all that racket as I'm working. Okay, that's cut in about as much as I'm going to be able to do it. And then the next step is to get my hands in there and just start combining flour and butter. Trying to force all that together. Really breaking the butter up. This only takes a few minutes. And another step you can do is just take the butter between your hands. I mean, take the flour and butter between your hands and break it up. Okay, I've got that pretty much broken up in there. 
I'm going to use my pastry cutter another time just to break up the chunks that I've created by forcing it together with my fingers. Okay. And now I want to add my sugar. Salt and baking powder. And once again, get all this mixed together. If you're nervous about getting your hands into the food, you could always do this in a stand mixer, I suppose. All right, so those are my dry ingredients. I'm going to rinse my hands here and then combine the wet ingredients, and then I'll combine those with this. To combine my wet ingredients, I'm going to put my four eggs in my bowl. And by the way, when you break an egg, don't break it on the edge of the bowl because it'll force shells inside. Just tap it on the counter, and that'll crack the shell without getting shells inside of the eggs. And then my cream. And then finally, my anise. And get this all combined. All right. And then run this into my flour mixture. Those of you who bake cookies can hopefully anticipate already what this flavor is going to be like. I'm going to combine this a little bit with the spatula, but really this is going to have to be combined with the hands and then kneaded smooth. It starts off sticky, but the flour will slowly absorb moisture. All right, I'm pretty much done, I think, with the spatula. This is going to be very sticky at this point, like so, but wait and see what happens as this comes together and the flour has an opportunity to absorb moisture. It takes a few minutes. Already I can feel it's starting to dry up and be less sticky. Scrape the sides of the bowl there. All right, look how that's coming together. All right, I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes just to give the flour a chance to absorb moisture and then this will be ready to knead and shape into cookies. I've let my dough rest for about five minutes. And now this is going to be ready to knead. It also gave me the time I needed to wash my glass bowls. I like to wash my dishes as I go along. You don't want to knead this dough too much, you don't need to. Just enough to make sure that it's smooth. And that's ready to start working with as far as shaping my cookies. Now, I want to show you how we used to shape these cookies as kids. 
you would start off with rolling a little rope. And then some different shapes we would do would we would roll the dough like so. I'm going to pinch the extra off. And there is a little like bow. You can put that on the baking sheet that way. Sometimes we would turn it over and make an upside down bow on the baking sheet. Pull off some more here. Other things that we would do is similar to that. We would roll the dough over like so and then reverse it into kind of like a little bit of an S. Like so. Again, you can bake it that way. You can turn it over. You can bake it that way for a slightly different look. Other possibilities here. Along the same lines as this, do one over and then do one piece under. So again, it's like a little bit of a shape, of an S shape, but one rope goes over the top and one rope goes underneath. So that's a possibility. Some very simple shapes. You can do a simple crossover. It's kind of large, so I'll pull those ends off. And that's a possibility for a cookie shape. Using a small bit of rope. You can shape that into just a little circle. That's another possibility. Keep going. I'm going to use a long rope here. And then double this in, on itself and then start twisting. And make a long twisted shape with the two end pieces sticking out on the edge end like that. Same thing again. Long rope. Don't need all of that. And bring these two ends together. And then cross them over to hide that seam. Then twist your ends that way to form a twisted rope with a loop at either end. One more. Start with a string and then just wrap it onto itself for a little round spiral. So those are some ideas that you can use for shaping your cookies. When these bake, they're going to expand quite a bit, not a whole lot, but a bit in the, uh, in the oven. I'm going to be shaping all of these cookies. I'm going to place them on a lightly greased baking sheet, actually two baking sheets, and I'm actually going to line them with parchment paper. And these bake in a 375 degree oven for 15 minutes. You just want to cook them. You don't want to brown them. These cookies come out very white and the frosting that's going to go on them is very white. And that's probably why they're called Italian Christmas cookies because they're almost as white as snow. So those are some shapes that we used to play with when we were kids. I wanted you to see what these look like when they come out of the oven. They barely brown at all. That one hasn't done any browning. That one's browned a little bit, a little bit browner. They're mostly white and that's, that's the look that you want and they're going to get a white colored white frosting on them and then they're going to get covered with uh, colored sprinkles. I have more dough to shape and bake. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to be letting these cookies cool. When everything is cool, I'm, I'll show you making the icing and frosting the cookies. My cookies have cooled, so my next step is to make my icing. This is a standard white icing. I have here one cup of confectioner's sugar or powdered sugar, one tablespoon of light corn syrup. I used to love this when I was a child. I wanted my mom to buy this for pancakes rather than maple syrup. It's pure sugar, so one can only imagine the reasons why she wouldn't buy it. And then you can use two tablespoons of water. I say why use water when you can use something with flavor in it. So this is two tablespoons of lemon juice. I mean, water is just water. Mix this together. And that's the icing for the cookies. Just going to make sure there's no lumps in there. It's all completely dissolved. It looks good. So this is going to make a very thin frosting that will then dry and harden on the surface of the cookies. I'll show you how we used to frost them next. I put a piece of parchment paper down because this part is going to make a bit of a mess. Just going to lightly drizzle some of this frosting on the cookies. And then put some colored sprinkles on top. This is what we kids like to do. Mom would frost the cookies and we'd put the colored sprinkles on. Just like so. And that frosting will dry and harden. And when all the cookies are done, they're ready to put out to eat. So there they are. Genuine Italian Christmas cookies. I'm going to zoom in on those so you can really appreciate how beautiful they are. White icing on them, colored sprinkles. I hope you could appreciate when I was showing about shaping these cookies that this is the kind of thing that children like to make. Your children can participate in this because the dough, when you're working with it, is just like children's modeling clay. Now, how do they taste? Okay, let's see how these taste. Mmm. That brings back memories of my childhood. Unlike water, putting butter in there makes it taste a little bit buttery. It's tender. And the lemon juice in the icing gives the frosting a wonderful lemony flavor. These are delicious and I've made these before and a week later they were still soft and crumbly. Best way to eat these is with hot coffee or hot tea. Maybe even a sweet wine on a cold evening. Italian Christmas cookies. Enjoy! Mm. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.